Joe Fortenball here for Odd Shark. No screwing around this week. I want to get right to business with two bets I really like based on a trend we talked about earlier in the week in the recap video. If you missed it, thankfully, I'm here to deliver this one again. Teams that play in London and then fly home to America and immediately play the following week, no buy. We've seen that happen seven times. In those seven instances, their opponent has gone over their team total six times. Six and one. I'll give you an example because we just had two of them last week. All right, two weeks ago, Minnesota and New Orleans play in London. They come home. Minnesota plays the Bears. Bears go over their team total. Saints play the Seahawks. Seahawks go over their team total. Six and one. We've got two of those this week. Packers and Giants played last week. Packers coming home to host the Jets. Jets team total only 18 and a half. Ding, 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 ding. Over. Giants hosting the Ravens. Ravens team total 25 and a half. Ding, 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 ding. Over. That's how you start a show with a knockout. Speaking of knockouts, pro segue right there. Let me just, let me just. Pro segue. Uh, John Anik and I, John Anik from the UFC, me from right here. Uh, we have got a great UFC 280 preview that's going to be dropping on Odd Shark soon. We talked about all the main fights on the card. Uh, another fight that he likes off the main card. Anik was sensational as always. So keep your eyes on Odd Shark because that's going to be coming soon. Big game bets. NFL and college. In the NFL, several big games this weekend. Uh, Dallas Philly, we're going to talk about in chase mode in just a few moments. So let's talk about Buffalo and Kansas City. A lot of action in this game. I would play A, over 54 points. I would play B, Buffalo's team total, over 28 and a half points. C, I would play the Bills at two and a half or better. All right, the weakest unit on this field is going to be the Kansas City defense. There's a reason Patrick Mahomes is an underdog at home for the first time. It's that defense. Short week for Kansas City. Kansas City's pass defense, bottom 10. They have been torn apart by every number one receiver they have faced, okay? They're giving up huge fantasy stats there. So if you're looking, Stephon Diggs uh, should have a big game. Look to the over on Stephon Diggs props. I the Bills went to Arrowhead twice last year. They hung 36 or more in both those games. Won one, lost the other, very easily could have won it in the AFC Divisional round. Point being, I don't think they're worried to go here. Bills are a wagon. They can beat you any which way. They can blow you out like they did Pittsburgh. They can come all the way from behind to beat you like they did against Baltimore. So a lot of bets in that one. I'm playing over 54, playing the Bills at minus two and a half. Bills team total, 28 and a half. I go over that as well. In college, Big game bet is going to focus on Penn State, Michigan. Several big games this weekend. We're going to talk about more of them throughout. Penn State's catching seven. Going to play the total here. It's about 51. I'm going to go under the 51 points. Was as high as 52 and a half. I saw it moving up. I thought, why? Franklin and Harbaugh, the respective coaches, have met seven times since they've been in charge of these programs. Five of those games have featured 49 or more points. 49 or fewer points. Woo! That's a big catch because it changes everything. It's like, why the hell is this guy playing the under and then he's giving me an over stat? Five of the seven games have featured 49 or fewer points, right? They don't have shootouts. Penn State's got two weeks to get ready for this game. I think Harbaugh's gonna wanna grind this thing down. As a Penn State grad, ugh, I want nothing to do with the side. Franklin, always major letdown in big spots, but that's where we are for the big game bets this weekend. Now it's time to talk about the trap games, the ones you should be weary of. We're gonna rip through a few of these. Number one, San Francisco laying five and a half at Atlanta. Something about this Atlanta team, man. I mean, Niners are good, do not get me wrong, but Atlanta, 5-0 against the spread, getting blown out last week, and then they backdoor Tampa. They don't quit. They're feisty, as they say, very feisty. And the Niners dealing with more injuries. Emmanuel Mosley at corner, ACL, I believe it was. He's out for the season. Dudes are getting hurt left and right for that team. They stayed on the East Coast to get ready for this game because they just played Carolina last week. Be careful laying the points with the Niners. That's number one. Uh, number two, I would be careful laying the points with Arizona at Seattle. I know Arizona gave Philly all they could handle last week. Seattle is catching three at home at some spots. It's come down to two and a half. You can get the three, I'd play Seattle plus three. Geno Smith's completing like 150% of his passes this year. I don't think that's enough of a story, what Geno Smith is doing in Seattle. That team was supposed to suck. They were supposed to lose pretty much every game. And instead, they're competitive. They're actually one of the most, them in Atlanta are two of the most fun teams in the NFL. They were supposed to be awful. Bears, of course, still awful. They were expected to be awful and not exciting. But those two, I'll tell you what. So I would be careful about laying points with Arizona up there in Seattle. Just throwing that out one. In college, two potential trap games. Clemson was a five point favorite at Florida State, night game in Tallahassee, down to three and a half. I don't know what to make of this. Florida State loves to try to blow football games. 
Two of the games they should have blown, uh, the Louisville game and LSU, had they blown it, they'd be two and four. This line wouldn't be three and a half. Clemson's got a great defense. I want to play Clemson. I'm scared out of my mind. The other one, going to be honest here, Utah laying three and a half against USC. All right? Ugh. This has got public dog written all over it with USC. You know how... I heard a stat at ESPN the other day. I don't have it to regurgitate. Probably should have written it down, obviously. But USC, what are they, 6-0, playing a two-loss team, and they're catching points. Historically, the teams in USC spot do very poorly. Just be very careful with the Trojans this weekend. And if the Trojans blow them out like many people expect, uh, I probably won't even address this next week. I'll have to address it. Man of honor, man of the people, man of integrity. Just throwing that one out there, though. Those are the games you should be careful of. Which leads us into chase mode. The Sunday night football game, we preview it every week. Two weeks ago we hit, last week we lost. Harbaugh, go for it on fourth and one. What are you doing? Put Cincinnati away. Still bitter. Focal point this week, Philadelphia and Dallas. I would love to play Dallas on the side. I would love to because of their defense and because of the injuries to the Philly offensive line. But I don't have enough information about the Philly offensive line right now to go ahead and make that bet. What I will bet is under 42 total points. I know, very exciting when you're chasing money Sunday night to have an under. I don't know if there's a worse feeling. At least with the over, you have the excitement with every first down. Grinding an under if you're chasing money. Whew probably regretting giving you this, but I think it's a good pick. Really like this one. It stands out as one of my five favorites for the week when we're talking about sides and totals. Um, Philly, like I said, banged up on the offensive line. You saw what happened in the Arizona game when they were losing starters. They went up 14-0 and then they weren't scoring. They couldn't move the ball after that. Dallas can get pressure. Dallas hasn't given up more than 19 points in a game all season. So I think they can at least limit what Philly wants to do on offense. Not expecting a ton from Cooper Rush and the Dallas offense. I believe they're 24th in scoring so far this season. Um, it, it's Sunday night football. It's on the road. It's going to be hostile. This is the best team you've played by a mile. Philly's defense is solid. Under 42 points for chase mode. The People's Parlay. So close. Two weeks ago, three and one on a four-teamer. Last week, two and one on a three-teamer. So I'm stepping in this week, hoping to close the show. We're bringing in two of you, and we're bringing in me, hopefully to get the job done here. If I fail, again, probably won't address it last next week. Just kidding, man of the people. Uh, here's where we're at. Blake at Blake, 5110096. Very specific. Likes the Buccaneers, minus eight over the Steelers. I believe the comment on Twitter was something like, Steelers stink. Uh, hard to disagree with that statement, based on what I've seen. A lot of points with Tampa Bay, who allowed that back door last week. Not happy about that. And then, at Alex P. 4P, pound for pound. He likes the Bengals, minus one and a half against the Saints. I got nothing on that game. Best of luck to you. I, as the man of the people, Jets, plus seven and a half against the Packers. Everybody loves the Jets, right? Packers coming back from the London game. I don't expect much from the defense. Offensively, they've only top, got to 27 points one time this season, and they needed overtime against the Patriots to do it. All right? That's a lot of points to try to cover against a very, very feisty Jets team. So if you want to be involved in the People's Parlay next week, follow Oddshark on Twitter. We send out the tweet during the week. You guys go ahead and give us your favorite picks in the comments. We take the three with the most likes. Boom. We fire them in this video, and if you hit, we send you a bunch of cool swag. Very easy, very peasy. Speaking of easy peasy, college football rapid fire. Let's rip through some of my favorite picks of the week. Number one, Toledo minus eight over Kent State. Getting ready for action, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Kent State wants to run the ball. I believe they're 15th in the country in rushing attempts. They love to run the ball. Toledo can defend the run. If you look at the stats for Toledo's run defense, just overall, they don't look great, but Ohio State ran all over them. All right, you gotta kind of throw that one out the window because I'm pretty sure Kent State and Ohio State aren't the same thing. I think Toledo's able to handle their business in this game. They're gonna cover the eight. Number two, Arkansas BYU over 66 points. KJ Jefferson, quarterback of Arkansas, should be back from the concussion. He missed the Mississippi State game last week. Up until that point, they had been averaging about 32 points per game. They should put it on BYU. BYU's defense is like 63rd in scoring D with games against Wyoming, Utah State, and South Florida. Those are the games that pad the stats. And you're only 63, shows you how bad that defense is. Arkansas's defense, outside the top 90 in scoring and opponent yards per play. I like a lot of points in that one. 
North Texas, minus six and a half over Louisiana Tech. Yes, I'm giving you all the big games this week. North Texas off the bye. They can score, averaging around 30 points per game. It's a home game. Louisiana Tech has really struggled on the road this year. 0-3 on the road, minus 80 point differential. Laying the six and a half with the mean green. And then finally, I will give you a big game. Oklahoma State plus the four against TCU. TCU has been so good to me this season. I can't believe I'm doing this. Mike Gundy in games with point spreads right around this number, he just has an incredible record. An incredible record. Even saying this, I hate the fact that I'm fading TCU. It's a smaller bet, but I'm gonna be on Oklahoma State. Thank you all for watching. Head on over to oddshark.com. Like I said, John Anik and I, dynamic duo. Anik, no hair, but great build. Me, flabby, but moderate hair. Great dynamic duo. We're gonna get you set for everything to UFC 280 related, which is going to be next Saturday the 22nd. But for now, best of luck to you and thank you all for watching.